I'm William Chen, the microfilm chair professor in food science and technology at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. I also run the university's food science and technology program. The new course in partnership with the Good Food Institute APEC, when it's offered to NTU food science and technology students, was oversubscribed from students within food science and technology program and beyond. In the near future, what we plan to do is broaden the offer to students beyond food science and technology program. This will be beneficial because because alternative protein will also require expertise from consumer education, internet of things, among other things. The emergence of alternative protein is a response to the impact of climate change and COVID-19 pandemic on the traditional food system. With a growing world population, we ought to find ways to produce food to meet the demand. Therefore, alternative protein is one of such options that we can develop to meet the consumer demand. To make alternative protein a sustainable option for consumers, we need to develop and incorporate innovations to bring down the cost of production, at the same time, raise awareness and increase the buy-in from the consumer. Demand drives supply. Only then, when we have connected all the dots together, alternative protein will become truly a sustainable alternative option for consumers.